be able to use as the end product user. And that's where allnaturalcbd.org comes in. This is an American-owned company. The product is made and tested right here in the United States. It is completely safe, and it is full-spectrum CBD. It's also a veteran-owned company. Go to allnaturalcbd.org, pick up some of this full-spectrum CBD lotion or any of their other products, including gummies now, and you can use promo code KC10 to save 10%. Allnaturalcbd.org, promo code KC10. Talk 95.3, Michiana's News Channel, weather station. Hey, good afternoon. Thank you for tuning in to News Talk 95.3, Michiana's News Channel. You cue my audio, please. I want to play. I'm going to apologize in advance. You have to listen to Joy Behar talk for just a smidgen. I promise it's relevant, okay? Because I know a lot of people are like, oh, dear God. Trust me, it's I, it gets worse. I can play you the Hillary Cackle song again if you really want to. We can, we can go down that road if you want me to. I, we can't. But you have to listen to Joy Behar. She is obsessed with Tucker Carlson. You know, if Tucker Carlson were Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, he might be posting on social media right now that Joy Behar has some sexy thirst for him. Because AOC loves posting that. Anytime conservatives or Republicans are talking about AOC, she's like, why do they all want to sleep with me? Tucker Carlson should start doing that to Joy Behar, but it probably makes him throw up in his own mouth. That's why he doesn't do it. But here's Joy Behar, once again, obsessed with Tucker Carlson. Okay, back in World War II period, uh, there was a guy named Father Coughlin, and he was an anti-Semite and a racist, and he had, he was a priest from the Catholic Church, he had, um, in a country of 127 million, it was on the radio, 127 million people in this country, he had 30 to 40 million listeners. That's a lot. Yeah, a lot. Especially Tucker Carlson has, in a country of 326 million people, we have grown, he has 3 million no followers. Followers. So it's 30 to 40 million versus 3 million. He's almost irrelevant, if you think about it. And, and I think maybe that's the way to go with him. Just ignore him. Have you ever heard of Every time you talk, we talk about him. Every time the media gives him airtime, he gets bigger and bigger. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> he's irrelevant. That's, yeah, we should just, like, totally, you know, he has, like, three million viewers. Uh, it's like, you know, whatever. Yeah, you be honest. Relevant. Uh, I mean, first of all, there's a lot wrong with this, I, I suppose. One, uh, there was a large fascist component way back then. <laughs> In the United States, there's massive anti Jewish sentiment in the United States way back then. That'll change after World War II, thank God. Uh, but the other thing that, that we also have to point out, too, is that, you know, back in the day, you only had a few radio programs, you only had a few television programs, and now you've got thousands to choose from. So, what I found very interesting about her statement is that he only has 3 million viewers, and really, we should just probably ignore him because he's basically irrelevant. Okay. Um, he has over a million more viewers per day than your show does. <laughs> so, who's relevant again? You really, I mean, The View. The View had a, a weird ratings month in March, and that is purely because Whoopi Goldberg had just come back after she was suspended. So Whoopi Goldberg comes back off of suspension, and the ratings for The View shot up. The ratings for The View have been in the toilet for a while now. But Whoopi Goldberg in that controversy, uh, Whoopi Goldberg ends up getting suspended, okay? The ratings went down further when she wasn't there, proving that she's really the only reason that anybody watches that show. Whoopi Goldberg comes back, and because she came back after the controversy, people tuned in just to see what would happen next. It's one of the things that people do. Somebody goes off the air, they come back on, and people just kind of want to tune in to see if, if it keeps going, if it, something else goes on, that sort of thing. So in March, they had this really high ratings month for The View. And with that really high ratings month with The View, there were still over 900,000 viewers less than Tucker Carlson in April. The View has not come close to touching Carlson's ratings. And The View is on network television. Tucker is on cable. And I know we always talk about cable television, but newsflash, ladies and gentlemen, somebody from inside the media, network television gets way bigger ratings than cable television does. Everybody wants to be on cable because that seems the hip thing. 
but more people still watch your alphabet networks than watch Fox, CNN, and MSNBC combined. It's not even close. So if Tucker Carlson is largely irrelevant, and by the way, his, his viewership is more than three million uh, per show, but you know, regard per day, I should say. Um, I can see. Hold on a second. I can pull it up. I think it's three point seven or something like that. I want to pull this up. Uh, his latest ratings book, Tucker Carlson's latest ratings book for April is three point four million per per show. So three and a half million per show. <laughs> which is the largest cable audience <laughs> by like a wide margin um, and, and it's just it's hysterical that they continue to play these these weird games as if somebody's not going to look at the ratings so enjoy Bayard who I know is a blithering idiot ladies and gentlemen I get it I, I understand that but they are obsessed with him and here's, here's Joy Behar, and I think that this is her way of trying to tell her producers we have got to stop talking about Tucker Carlson but you have to talk about Tucker Carlson because that's the only reason anybody really listens to you. And you still can't come close to pulling the ratings that he pulls. And he's a nightly show on cable. You his show airs at 8 p.m.? You're in the daytime. You're in the peak hours for the largest television audience for women in the country. And you still pull in less... Six. Less, well, he pulls in more than a million viewers than, than you get per day. I mean, it's just. 410. They're obsessed with him. They're doing everything they can to try and say that he's responsible for what happened in Buffalo. Of course, he's not responsible for what happened in Buffalo. Uh, it's it's their Five, seven, latest six. attempt to smear somebody and have them fired. Tucker Carlson rightly attacked Schumer and everybody else who was Five, going one, after him uh, so yesterday. The is all the and same. For doing that, he absolutely should do that. You know, Schumer wanted him to be censored. Tucker Carlson called him on the show to, to debate about it. And Schumer declined. Because that's what the left does now. The left runs away from these debates. And then what they do is they try oh, to, four, after they pour it into their own martini glass and smell it, Seriously? what they Watch do this. is they try to say, well, we don't want to legitimize somebody like that by talking with them. That is code that's for they're going to kick my butt if I go on their program. And that's so I'm just not going to go on their program and embarrass myself. And that's exactly what happened to Chuck Schumer, who could barely hold together a sentence on his own anyway. But they're obsessed with him. There's no doubt about that. When you're on the top of the hill, everybody comes for you. Nobody talks about you if you're at the bottom. The rest of the view isn't even the top show in their time slot. It's crazy. More coming up. WTRC FM and HD1, Niles, South Band, Elkhart. News Talk 953, Michiana's News Channel. You are breaking news. I forgot that I didn't save his ratings in my my uh, show prep thing. I saved it on my phone. So I had to pull out my phone and pull it out. Man, it's a bummer that guy didn't mind going here. I mean, Friday is a perfect time for that. I know. The little lines and everything. I get it. Yeah, it makes sense. I thought he told me the other day that his birthday was Friday, though, and I, I was kicking myself after the show for not suggesting that. And he called back on Friday. Well, yeah, I mean, I'd like to know about the flyover if it's in the news anywhere. Yeah, me too. That would be great. Because then, you know, we can link to it. Yeah, I mean, we can't, I, I don't think it's something we can write right now, because, you know, you know, if this gentleman's wrong, you know, that's bad journalism, so, hey, yeah, I'm gonna wait for confirmation. Yeah. Kids being smart. Oh, no, did Gutfeld surpass him? Huh. Hold on. What? Hold on a second. What? Last I heard, Tucker was was the uh, the ratings king, but I wouldn't be surprised if Gutfeld passed him. Wow. Huh. Gutfeld's got oh. such a good show, and he really is a masterpiece. Hmm. Hmm. Gutfeld 
is the highest rated program in all of cable news on the basis of total views per its hour at 11. You're right. Very good. I will, I will correct that. Did you see that Gutfeld apologized to his audience? <laughs> Such a baller move. Because they, they basically, what they did is they moved Gutfeld's show off to cover the election. And so he then apologized to his... <laughs> it's awesome. It was awesome. Oh, man, it was great. Uh, yeah, that'd be great, actually. For us? Looks like an email address for us, Casey. I don't know what your email address is. Uh, just, just, uh, we'll just send it to mine and I'll forward it. Um, so, <laughs> uh, I lost of mine. Uh, C Ben, all lowercase. One, two, nine, seven. Uh oh. At gmail.com. That's not much worse than email, but I don't know what email to give you, so I'll forward it. Yes. 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 Okay, wonderful. We need a balance of nature. Cut that. Okay, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Oh, thank you, Eminem. <clears throat> That's wonderful. That lady's going to give you some more information about that. Eminem, uh, Mr. Lawson's home address. <laughs> they gave him the, the gave me the address and get wet for a vet ink will also ride in the procession. Very cool. That's awesome. Yeah, thanks. Don't think we ought to publicize that. No, we won't do that. No. <laughs> no, that I don't think that lady wants me to do that. Yeah, we will not we will not publish his address. No. No. But <laughs> very cool. I don't know who Get Wet for a Vet is, but they ride motorcycles, so they ride people. I'll forward that email to John when I get it. Yeah. I wasn't really sure if like we had a specific vet net email for news that we send that kind of stuff. That would probably be John's. If you send it to mine, you'll get lost. You'll never see it again. It'll disappear. I have, my, I have a work email, but I... Honestly, I can't get it. Well, and that's not true. But, you know. Well, there would be a St. Joseph County Police Motorcycle Unit as well. Commissioner Dieter is going to lead that. Ah, uh, very cool. All righty, man. Got about a minute. Experience I'm just coming back. In present story creations, we're being part of his talented staff and combined 100 <laughs> Yes. Watch. I know it's time to stretch, but too bad. So yesterday was quick. Today is slow. Many of which are not 
from the radio show. Go check it out at rumble.com slash Casey the host. Also want to thank R&B Car Company, locations in South Bend and Warsaw. R&B Car Company are your used car experts. All right, Chris Wallace. We got an update on old Chrissy boy. Remember, Chris Wallace uh, had a low-rated show on Fox News Sunday morning. Can't see. It was perpetually the worst-rated cable Sunday morning show. Decided he was going to jump ship, go to CNN, not just CNN, but CNN Plus. And he thought that was a wise decision. Of course, we laughed about it many, many, many times on the show. <laughs> CNN Plus like closes less than one month in operation. Chris Wallace is apparently having daily hissy fits about this. I don't know if those are true. It's just a rumor, and I choose to believe that they're true. And next thing you know, I was like, hey, the smart move, okay? The smart move is to make Chris Wallace a part of the primetime lineup for CNN. But one question I had is I don't know if Wallace wants to actually work for a living. I don't think that he does. I think that he just wants to be a part-timer. And, yeah, it, it appears so. And, and here's the thing. As much as I don't like Chris Wallace, Chris Wallace is a massive upgrade over anybody else in CNN's lineup. That's the truth. He is. <laughs> okay, so, so even if he's not great, he is a big upgrade. Well, he's going to get a show on CNN, regular CNN this time, not obviously CNN Plus, but it's going to be Sunday night. So he left Fox News for a demotion to go to CNN. But he went to CNN Plus, which is even a demotion from CNN. And then when they did put him on regular CNN, it was a demotion from where he was on Fox because now he's on Sunday night instead of Sunday morning, which is a much worse time slot, by the way. And, and just, I don't know what this guy is doing. I, you know, you, At this point, I don't know if he plays golf, but he should probably just hang it up and go play golf. And just grumble to himself and, you know, bore the poor cart girl. Well, cart lady, because not all of them are girls. You know, the bore the poor uh, cart lady to death with his tales of how he thinks he's been amazing and a legend in news and all that other stuff. Uh, he's not his dad. We all know that. But he is going to get a show Sunday night on CNN. But only Sunday night. We'll probably, like he did with Fox, occasionally show up on some other stuff as well. MSNBC. Once again, showing war footage from Ukraine that actually is a video game. Why does this continue to happen? This time they are blaming uh, MSNBC. They're not blaming Ukraine's Ministry of Defense. So I've got to make that dis distinction there because Ukraine's Ministry of Defense has been the guilty party here throughout the entire war of sharing fake videos of their military operations against the Russians. But this just appears to be MSNBC doing it, and nobody seems to know why. I don't know, I don't know. It, 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 here's the, if you look at it, it doesn't, it doesn't look real. Like, why? It doesn't look real. But they're posting it, and they all seem to be coming from the same game, this Arma game. I've not played it, I've heard great things, but I've not played it, and so MSNBC's military analyst, it's one thing if it's, you know, mad cow, but their military analyst posted it. Okay, look, I'm old fashioned. This, this might just be the old veteran in me. Shouldn't the military analyst be able to dissect, dissect, <laughs> decipher, <laughs> I use the right syllable. Shouldn't a military analyst for a major news, air quote, news network be able to decipher if something is a video game or if it's real? Isn't that kind of their job? So he posts this video, which is a video game. And then several other people who are blue check mark brigaders, Max Boot, one of them, reposted it. Like, what is going on? What is going on? This is so bizarre. But it continues to pop up. I, you know, who knows? Maybe the deep fake videos are going to have a bigger impact on our society than I thought they were. It's, I didn't think, I knew they would have an issue. But deep fake videos, I always assumed that people would relatively quickly be able to figure out that they're not real, right? 
but now I'm not so sure. I think people just kind of automatically, you know, assume it's compression with the the uh, the big tech platforms and that sort of stuff, and then they just repost it. So MSNBC posting this stuff, Max Boot again reposting it, other blue check mark brigade journalists reposting it, further spreading fake news that this was a, an actual operation of Ukraine against the Russians. It was not. Garfield. Speaking of fake news, now remember Garfield. Elon Musk has kind of put a pause on his purchasing of Twitter because he wants an, an analysis done on the number of fake Twitter accounts. Now, we've talked about this for a number of years. For those of you who don't know, the vast majority of Twitter are derelict accounts. They're not real, or they are real, but no longer in use, as in the people have left the account. It's just sitting there, okay? It's not active. Nothing is being posted to it. There's tons of bots, and the general number of Twitter users is considered to be much smaller than the actual number of accounts that are on the platform. When you look at the news and political sector, in particular, like 1% to 2% of the accounts are responsible for like 90% of the content. And that's anybody who's active on Twitter. So a very, very, very small number of people are actually driving any political discourse on Twitter, which already tells you a lot about our society but one of the things that elon musk wants to figure out is really what's the total number here because it might affect his offer right if he finds out that hey i'm basing my offer even though it's above your stock price you know because of the number of, of active accounts that are there but those active accounts are maybe half or something like that then i may need to adjust my offer so they're doing that he's still going through and buying twitter it's just impossible that audit is being done and in the midst of all of this we find out that 50 percent of biden's twitter followers are fake now politicians always have a large number of fake followers this is very common celebrities politicians they always have large numbers of fake followers they're almost never organic okay and this is, this is a lot, doing, though. Dude? I think Hillary Clinton was like 18 or 19 percent or something of that nature. 50 percent is staggering. Good He's got almost as you many fake followers on Twitter as he has the legal vo uh, votes in the, uh, the election. It's crazy stuff. So half of Biden's Twitter followers are fake, according to an audit tool. Mm -hmm. And these tools vary. Um, but, you know, people people always check, you know, prominent people's uh, Twitter accounts. It's it's fairly normal, but it's just such a high number. Uh, Musk said that the number of fake accounts on Twitter was close to about 20%, which is four times higher than Twitter claims. Hmm. So on the average, okay, Twitter has about 20% fake accounts. Biden has over 50%. <laughs> not a big surprise, though. Joe Biden's not exactly a guy who connects with younger people. Uh, there's lots of younger people that are on Twitter. Twitter does seem to be pretty diverse in its age. Facebook, much older. You know, Facebook is basically stuck around with the older generations. Well, younger generations have moved on to different platforms because they want to get away from platforms that mom and dad are on. That's really why. Mostly because your sweet little angel, who I know would never do this, wants to show her backside and get supplement endorsements. That's what she wants to do. I get supplement endorsements without showing my backside. But I show my backside, sure. <laughs> For the right amount. Uh, but yeah, 50%, which is just a crazy high number and do with it what you will, you know, everything about this guy is propped up by the machine and isn't authentic. I don't know what else to say. More coming up, Newstalk 95.3, Michiana's News Channel. Casey Hendrickson. 95.3, Casey. No one wants to see that. You'd be surprised. Uh... There was a time my tush was in demand. Okay, so that thing I just forwarded to John is not entirely useless, but it's only got the guy's address and the phone number and call. So, you yeah, want to duplicate that contact for symmetry yeah. to if he needs the other to contact side. Dieter because Eminem is posting on the live stream that Dieter is leading the police procession. So there's going to be a whole big thing. It's not just a flyover. Um, and then he can have Dieter come on, and Dieter can do a whole thing, which Dieter's yeah. always happy to do. So, yeah, I just I looked at that. I forwarded it to John before I or after I okay. got it, and I'm going. Okay, that's just his address. Like that's nothing we can use. And then I saw there's a phone number, so yeah, you know, at least get some information from whatever. Yeah, and your best bet would probably be to you know 
probably go through Dieters because he's, you know, commissioner. And he'll be able to, you know, one, as a public servant, come on and talk about it. And then as a law enforcement officer, he'll know not to out the dude's address and stuff like that. So Yeah, yeah. You can't always yeah. trust for him. But they're asking people to kind of like, you know, meet up because I think that you can participate. So that might be a part of why the address was shared was that you can kind of meet up and, and do a whole thing. So. Well, I mean, if we were a TV station, we'd probably be able to. And, and, you know, it's, I just have a policy of not publishing people's addresses. Well, yeah, you know, I mean, it's, it, yeah, it's, yeah, um, yeah. not that it's necessarily wrong for them to share it with us. No. But, yeah, no, we're not, we're not publishing that. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah. There's too many crazy out there, man. Yeah, like that weirdo who sent me a letter from, like, Arizona or something. I was on Tucker Carlson. They tracked my home address down. Well, when you go on national media like that, I'm sure you weren't surprised. That's not cool. No, usually they send it to my work. They don't send it to my home. Yeah, that's, that's not cool. Yeah, it went right in the trash. Well, I mean, where you work is public. So. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, I don't hide. It's like, you know, whatever. It's easy to find somebody's address if you know what you're doing. Yeah. The problem is it takes effort. So it's like, you went through the effort to find my home address instead of sending it to my work address. Well, yeah. At that point, it's like, what makes I'm that, stuff What makes that worse now, though, is they have, you know, they have the potential. They know where your kids live. Yeah. They know where your wife lives. Right. Now. Like, that's got to be what about to do. Yeah. You know. You got favors being windows, by the way. Yeah, and that's, that's why the last person who came, <laughs> we've talked about a couple times on the show, I, I get people occasionally to knock on my door. <laughs> and everybody who knocks on my door has a gun pointed at them. They don't realize it, but they do. Um, I think the last the last person who did it, I think they realized that they had messed up. They crossed they crossed the line. Pointing gun behind the door and then hide it or what? You, it's, it's, it's literally like this. It's like, I'm going to shoot the door, and you're toast. Okay. But they don't see it. No, they don't know. And then if you realize they're friendly, you put it away immediately. Yeah. Yeah, you can take care of it. But I think they realized they crossed the line. They weren't thinking anything of it. You know, they were friendly. They were just trying to hand something off to me real quick. But I think that they understood that it was like, you're at my house. You know, you got a public job. You you can't. Yeah. Casey's being a little weird. (laughs) Okay. I'm gonna leave now. He's not talking to himself, people. He's talking to me, okay? No, no. I mean, my behavior towards him was not normal. Oh. It was very much why you at my house. <laughs> that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah, I don't like it. All right, which one do we have here, favors? Yes. I think I'm three of them.
weather and traffic during Michiana's morning news on 95.3 MNC, your breaking news and weather station. And good afternoon. Thank you for tuning in to Stock 95.3, Michiana's news channel. I am your host, Casey Hendrickson. This is, um, this is interesting. So we've got the GOP delegation. Now, this is about the People's Republic of California, but I'm telling you the story because this is an issue that is a national issue. But this is specifically about California. A congresswoman representing California's 39th district has now sent a letter to the California Board of Education demanding that the board consider its decision, reconsider its decision, to phase out advanced math opportunities for public school students. You know why they're doing this? Because math is racist and we need math equity. So we're getting rid of advanced math. Okay, real quick, while you're driving in your cars or sitting at your cubicles or eating your froyo, just yell out super loud. When you think of racial demographics that are super good at math, who do you think of? Go. Asians. That's right, white people didn't pop into your head, did it? Asians. It sure did. You know darn well you're, you're talking about Asians, you're talking about Indians. That's what you're talking about. That's who you think is the best at math. Is that a stereotype? Sure, it's a stereotype. Is it a true stereotype? Sometimes. But in because of math equity. Wow. So this is a press release that was issued by the Office of Representative Young Kim, Republican of California. In her letter, Kim criticized a proposed mathematics framework which required California public schools to eliminate an option for advanced or accelerated mathematics classes prior to the sophomore year of high school. So they're just getting rid of it. And if you have a math whiz, put them in the advanced class. Let them strive for excellence. What? What is... This is so bizarre. It's not bizarre. It, it's... Okay. It is bizarre. It's just not surprising because this is the type of thing that's been happening for a long time. Advancing STEM education is a first order concern for our nation, which even goes back to the Obama era, for crying out loud. One of the three things that Obama did right was he promoted 3D printing and he celebrated young inventors. One of the three things he did right. And it's because we need, we need more STEM. We need more students to learn these fields. Desperately do. So she says, advancing STEM education is a first order concern for our nation to build the foundations of future technolo technological advancements and innovation. If we want to maintain our competitive edge in this field, we must allow and encourage students to learn at an accelerated pace if they have the capability to do so. Exactly. This isn't hard, but they don't want that. They don't want advanced students. And let's be honest, most of those kids who would be in those advanced math, math classes probably not going to be pasty white kids. So what? Kim pointed to data from national assessments which show that California students have fallen below the national average in fourth and eighth grade mm -hmm. math. Okay? Instead of addressing the serious needs of California students in math, the board has decided to push forward with guidelines that will further limit learning potential and widen educational gaps. Yep. Now, obviously, she makes kitty, kitty, kitty. If you have people who are capable, students, kids, who are capable of doing advanced math at a young age, let them get in the advanced math so that way they can continue to thrive and succeed and accelerate. They're going to be the brilliant minds of the future. You don't throttle that. You know, this is the type of crap. So here's, for those of you who don't know, okay, allow me to relive some of the angst of my childhood growing up in one of the worst school districts in the entire country, the Clark County School District, okay? It's uh, the second largest school district in the country behind New York, and it is perpetually between number one and number three worst school districts in the entire country, okay? Perpetually. So I was an advanced student, though. I was able to get into the advanced classes. Do you know what I was told by my high school? No, we can't put you in advanced classes. Why not? I was on I was on my way to getting my honors degree. <laughs> Diploma, I should say, whatever. And 
they wouldn't allow me. You know why? Because they had enough people in the honors program to qualify for their uh, their state and federal guidelines. So they didn't need any more. So I was just automatically throttled out. Now, looking back on it as an adult, there is a part of me that wonders if it was because of the color of my skin. Uh, I don't know. I have no idea. But nonetheless, at the time, I was furious because I was working towards Norwalk University or West Point where you have that honors thing right next to your name when you graduate is a big deal. And they killed that. They completely killed that. Why? Because they felt they had enough people in those classes. Well, what's going to happen now with these kids here? They're going to be sitting there in boring classes that they are already way too advanced for. And they're not going to be able to excel until later on in life if they don't lose that desire and aptitude. Now, let me bring this in with another thing that came out. And this is, I think, critical. Now, that, obviously, that's the People's Republic of California. But we've seen stories like that all over the country. There's a new study that just came out. It found evidence of inflation in high school GPAs between the years of 2010 and 2021. So keep in mind, California is doing this because they want math equity. They want to raise everybody's grade without allowing the excel excellent students to excel. Okay? That's what they want to do. They want to make sure that, oh, we're going to bring everybody's grade up by lowering the standards. So everybody is going to be able to do this really remedial math. Okay. So between 2010 and 2021, this study shows that high school GPAs were inflated, suggesting that while American high school seniors are graduating with better grades, they also know less than high school graduates in previous decades. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. And this is, again, this is a study that was done by the ACT. Yeah, you know that test that you take? The other one to the SAT, the ACT? They're the ones who did this study. Not some conservative group or some anti-education group or even a teacher's union. This was conducted by the ACT. They said, they said, current high school graduates know less than their parents and their grandparents and their great-grandparents. High school graduates today are less informed and dumber than previous generations, yet they have higher grades. How's that possible? Now, the only way you get to that point is if you lower standards. The study was conducted by the ACT, nonprofit organization that administers the ACT college admissions test. ACT researchers examined the data of 4.3 million high school seniors from more than 4,700 schools in that who took the ACT between 2010 and 2021. They found that even though the test takers GPA increased during that period, their ACT scores continued to decline. So once again, high school graduates today are, I don't want to say dumber, they're less educated than previous decades, yet they have higher grades. This is not good. This is this is why the story from California is so important. This is why college professors running around and saying things like being on time and math and science and proper English and literature, all racism. This is why that is so important. This is why when you go into the empowerment zone at South Bend School Corporation, it is a big deal that they teach social justice and wokeism instead of reading, writing, and math. That's why it's a problem. Yeah, you're graduating high school. You're just graduating high school with far less knowledge than the average high school graduate of previous decades. Congratulations. You're the least educated generation. whoop de doo But I know. They have a Twitter account and a TikTok. So they know more than you do. MSC News Time 431. Time to check out Impress Jewelry Creations, creating meaningful jewelry for the moments that will last a lifetime. This is Michiana's breaking news. Hey, this caller. What do they want? Uh, I don't know. He wanted to talk to you about what you said about the school district thing. His name is Ben. Uh, all right, fine. Okay. I'm feeling generous. All right. Sir, we'll put you on the air right after this break, okay? Thank you. All right, folks, I'll be back in just a few minutes. If I wanted a marathon.
group to fail. To follow, not lead. To suffer, not prosper. To despair, not drink. I start with energy. I'd cut off America's supply of cheap, abundant energy. I couldn't take it by force. So I'd make Americans feel guilty about using the energy that heats their homes, fuels their cars, runs their businesses, and powers their economy. I'd make cheap energy expensive, so that expensive energy would seem cheap. I would empower unelected bureaucrats to all but outlaw America's most abundant sources of energy. After banning its use in America, I'd make it illegal for American companies to ship it overseas. If I wanted America to fail, I'd use their schools to teach one generation of Americans that their factories and their cars will cause a new ice age. And I'd muster a straight face so I could teach the next generation that they're causing global warming. When it's cold out, I'd call it climate change instead. I'd imply that America's cities and factories on wind power and wishes. I teach children how to ignore the There's a package. Condemning logging, mining, and farming while having rooms over their heads. And their There's a package. Food on their tables. I would never teach children that the free market is the only force in human history to uplift the poor, establish the middle class, and create lasting prosperity. Instead, I demonize prosperity itself so they will not miss what they will never have. If I wanted America to fail, I would create countless new regulations and sell them cancel ones. It would be so complicated that only bureaucrats, lawyers, and lobbyists could understand them. That way small businesses with big ideas wouldn't stand a chance. And I would never have to worry about another Thomas Edison, Henry Ford, or Steve Jobs. I would ridicule as flat earthers those who urge them to lower energy costs by increasing supply. And when the evangelists of common sense try to remind people about the laws of supply and demand, I'd enlist a sympathetic media to drown them out. If I wanted America to fail, I'd empower unaccountable bureaucracy seated in a distant capital to bully Americans out of their dreams and their property rights. I sent federal agents to raid guitar factories for using the wrong kind of wood. I forced homeowners to tear down their own homes built on their own land. I'd make it almost impossible for farmers to farm, miners to mine, loggers to log, and builders to build. Because I don't believe in free markets, I'd invent false ones. I'd devise fictitious products like carbon credits and trade them in imaginary markets. I convince people that this would create jobs and be good for the economy. If I wanted America to fail, for every concern I'd invent a crisis, and for every crisis, I know what this is, though. Like shutting down entire industries and killing tens of thousands of jobs. I know what's in and here. Say, spotted owls. Okay, and when everyone learned the stunning irony that the owls were victims of their larger cousins and not the people, it would already be decades too late. Uh, charging down. If I wanted America to fail, for, I'd make it easier uh, PlayStation to stop cars and, PlayStation and start it easier Control to kill it. jobs oh, and create shit. them. More fashionable to resent it's success than to seek it. When industries seek to create jobs, I'd file lawsuits to stop them, and then I'd make taxpayers pay for my lawyers. If I wanted America to fail, I would transform the environmental agenda from a document of conservation to an economic suicide pact. I would concede entire industries to our economic rivals by imposing regulations that cost trillions. I would celebrate those who preach environmental austerity in public while indulging a lavish lifestyle in private. I convince Americans that Europe has it right and that America has it wrong. If I wanted America to fail, I would prey on the goodness and the decency of ordinary Americans. I would only need to convince them that all of this is for the greater good. If I wanted America to fail, I, I suppose I wouldn't change a thing. From the first step to the final phase, industrial and commercial electrical done right. Casey Hendrickson. And good afternoon. You're tuning in to Stock 95.3, Michiana's News Channel. I am your host, Casey Hendrickson. Uh, let's see, what do we have here? Oh, got to thank RB Car Company, locations in South Bend, Warsaw, Columbia City. Go to rbcarcompany.com. If you do go to one of their dealerships, please let them know that I sent you. 
So we we're just talking about the latest uh, latest study kind of came out of this. So two things, really. In the People's Republic of California, they have made a move in one of the school boards there to go ahead and get rid of advanced math for what they call math equity, which, of course, makes no sense. Uh, the other thing is the ACT actually released a study. They found that between 2010 and 2021 that the GPs of graduating students were higher than in previous decades. However, the test scores were lower. They had less knowledge. And I'm reminded of an old story from 2007. Well, I think it was like last year that they the published cash this. At the top of the hour. But what ended up happening is uh, there was a Five massive o'clock. study for several years in a row where they would study high school graduates who are going to college they but before they went long. into college they would give them a civics test it's already and then the after they graduated college they would give them the same civics test and they ended up finding out that what was happening is high school students had a pretty good grasp of civics college students the same students four years later didn't hmm. so they were going into college and actually losing civics knowledge hmm. which explains a ton in our society and they did that study for several years in a row and the results were always very similar and uh, i have an old article from the new york sun from 2007 which kind of covers some of that which i can link in the daily show prep for everybody if you are so interested i do have some people want to call about this so if you want to call the glass doctor of elkhart and st joseph county phone line you can certainly do that 574-25-95-953 that is 25-95-953 ben welcome to the program good afternoon Hey, Jesse, how are you? I'm doing well, man. What's up? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm putting on my tin, tin hat for you. Okay. Um, I suspect the, uh... 115 miles. One of the reasons that they're getting rid of these advanced classes is a lot more insidious than just the, uh, math equity. Um, I'm sure you're aware that if you take, um, a very advanced kid and you don't keep, keep carrying them, keep them on their toes, mm. They, they can become a problem real quick. I mean, the old adage is that a, a, a lower level IQ kid will be a problem or can be a problem child. However, they're not going to create complex problems. They're going to create very simple ones. Yeah. However, if you, if you have a child that is capable of very, very advanced thought and processing and you do not keep them challenged, they will create very, very advanced problems. And by so doing, by doing this, uh, they're basically really? changing or Come on, to change man. the problem creating group and create problem equity as well. You know, that's an interesting theory, and what comes to mind, and you've probably, because I know you've been listening for a long time, but you've probably heard me mention this before. Uh, when I was in high school, the smartest people I knew were the stoners. <laughs> and, and I know that that, you know, seems counterintuitive to a lot of people, but again, I come from one of the worst school districts in the country where advanced students were not allowed to go to advanced classes. And so they got bored really quickly. They would do their work, they would easily excel, they would pump up their grade and then it would kind of coast for the rest of the quarter and just kind of get a you know, middle average grade. And they would spend the rest of the time just kind of partying. So there's a little bit of the throttling, the ability for them to nurture their talents like you're talking about that can lead to substance abuse. It can lead to, you know, sort of this delinquent behavior, but also, like you said, maybe you create a super villain and you get kids who are now trying to fill that, fill that emptiness with a, let's just say like an advanced business scheme, which could involve illegal activity or something of that nature. We've seen that a lot. I've worked with, thank you, I've worked with when I was on Airport Um, he, he, created a company, they in Edinburgh and Scotland, created a company called Mindscreen. And the whole premise of the company was to look through high schools, etc., for kids that are going off the rails. Because what he proved, and, and statistically this is correct, is that um, if you have a child that is going off the rails, it's probably because they're bored, of, bored out of their corner first of all. Yeah. Which probably is a good indicator that they are in fact not very good at thinking inside the box. Well, what's the old adage about successful business people? They disappear inside the box. Which is one of the reasons that um, people with simple learning disabilities such as um, your baseline reading ability 
don't call a Scotsman an Englishman. They will, they will bite you on that. <laughs> Just a bueno. <laughs> you need to be surrounded by people who you don't feel the need to explain yourself to. Freedom system, not work, Yeah, that's a great way of putting it. They are all hard. They really are. And for people who've never been around folks who have Down syndrome, the one thing that you have to accept is that they are huggers. <laughs> They just are, and it doesn't matter how old they get, they are going to hug you. So, you're just going to have to grin and bear that. Yeah, uh, Xbox system. x -fug. Is that a number? Xbox, no, I've had them around for a little bit. That's what they want you to believe. Oh my. Yeah, my grandpa said this the other day. I kind of agree with him. The reason we're having such high inflation is because the government was giving out so much money during the pandemic. It was always going to come back. Always going to come back. It didn't matter who the next president was going to be. There was going to be inflation. The problem is that Biden made it way worse. That's the problem. Well, I think they also printed more money. Because well, yeah, I think so. Taxes. That's the one thing that they weren't really doing under the Trump administration. They weren't really printing a ton of money. They printed some. But Biden came in and started printing cash. Just massive quantities of it. I was like, oh, this is so bad. Yeah. And start embracing Keynesian economics, you're going to pay for it. But I mean, we didn't increase taxes during the pandemic and we were giving out money. Yep. So we didn't really have a way to balance the budget. Deficit shot through the roof. Whether you're uh, doing paintball, whatever it is, if you're military, police, 
any of those manufacturing facilities where you have safety glasses, you can't deal with fog and you have to protect your eyes. Go to xfog.com, promo code KC and you'll save 10%. Talk to your supervisors about getting this in standard safety equipment for everybody at your work. And talk to your favorite retailer for carrying xfog in store. xfog.com, promo code KC. On News Talk 95.3, Michiana's News Channel, from breaking news and weather station. Hey, good afternoon. Thank you for tuning in. News Talk 95.3, Michiana's News Channel. I am your host, Casey Hendrickson. We want to thank you all for tuning in and joining us today. A lot of new video content on Rumble has been uploaded, so make sure you go check that out. Rumble.com slash Casey, the host. Of course, we have the live stream going right now. All right, let's talk about the uh, domestic, ter domestic terrorist organization known as Black Lives Matter. More information as more leaks come out about BLM and Black Lives Matter. Who, there's this really funny video that we did the other day on the early show where Patrice Cullors accused Candace Owens of harassing her at her house, but the house is listed as, like, the BLM property, so it's supposed to be communal. But Patrice Collins is saying, that's my house with my kids. It was just, it was really funny to watch this kind of play out after the Table of the Rens saga. Because the left is celebrating Table of the Rens going to relatives' houses and doxing the libs of TikTok account and everything else. And then all Candace Owens did is show up at the house and ask the security guard if they could talk to whoever was there. Because it was listed as the Black Lives Matter house. It wasn't listed as Patrice Collins' house. And... It, it was very polite, and she left. And Patrice Kohler's hopped onto Instagram and was crying about how her family isn't safe and she's being harassed. And Candace Owens is going to show up and threaten to kill her or something, which never happened. So Candace Owens actually had to preemptively release a video uh, from a report that she was doing. But it was just really surreal to kind of watch this play out. The outrage by people who celebrated Taylor Lorenz docs and lives on TikTok. Now, you would know that we've been documenting, and others have as well, that Black Lives Matter, um, they they have tens of millions of dollars in money that's gone. Nobody knows where it is. California suspended fundraising. Uh, there's you know investigations happening in it. Indiana uh, Attorney General Tom Rikita has opened up a case against Black Lives Matter, and that's because they weren't cooperating with requests for documents. You know, so there's a, a whole host of issues affecting Black Lives Matter. This is an organization that is being sued by local chapters because those local chapters have fundraised on behalf of BLM and have never received a dime back. Yep. No investment in their community, no investment in their organization, no marketing materials, nothing. They're on their own, which is exactly what I told you BLM was going to do when they first popped up because I've seen these groups happen a million times in my career. Now, BLM has purchased several multi-million dollar properties all over North America, including, and not a joke, but I feel like I need to re restate this every time it comes up when we talk about this, including the former Communist Party headquarters in Canada. Hey, so they literally bought that house. Now, some new stuff that has come out, because again, they've raised billions of dollars, yet at the end of March, they only had 19 grand in the bank account. Where did that money go? We know that Patrice Colors has several multi-million dollar properties. We know that she's got a car collection. But where else did that money go? Well, Black Lives Matter paid disgraced co-founder Patrice Colors' brother, baby daddy, and other close friends nearly $4 million, according to tax documents that was filed by the organization. The documents which were released on Tuesday show that BLM paid an art firm owned by Damon Turner, the father of Colors' child, they paid him $969,459. They also paid an LLC run by Kohler's brother, Paul Kohler's, $840,993 for, quote, professional security services. Look, I'll do your security for half price. Okay. Just, just give me, like, you know what? We'll call it an even $350,000. Okay, I'll do it for that. BLM also paid... Uh, Shalomaya Bowers, a close friend of Colors and his company, $2,167,894 for its consulting and management services. 
Another one of Kohler's friends, Raymond Howard, received $107,000 for fundraising council activities. Kohler's herself, that one doesn't seem crazy. Kohler's herself billed BLM $73,523 for charter flights from June 2020 to July 2021. Though BLM has claimed Kohler's repaid those expenses sometime after July 2021. Uh, <laughs> uh, BLM also included its purchase of a $6 million LA mansion in the filing. In total, the organization spent more than $37 million on grants, real estate, and charter on private flights, according to the tax filings. The documents also show that Kohler's ultimately had exclusive control over how BLM's funds were spent, since she was the only member of BLM's board of directors from July 1st, 2020 to June 30th, 2021, which is the time frame covered by the forms. Are you starting to get it now? Because I know there's still some of you out there who think that BLM is is really fighting the good fight, that their mission is honorable. I know that there's still some people out there who believe this. This is who they are. This is who I told you they were going to be when they first showed up after Michael Brown shooting. I told you exactly who they were and what they were going to do. And again, I've, I've just I've seen these organizations on the left and on the right happen dozens of times throughout my career. And it is always the exact are you same. Hungry? This is how you set up these, these money schemes. And BLM has set up a money scheme. Now, they're, they're basically getting set to fold this organization. And they're trying to do what they can to get everything out of it. That's kind of what it looks it's what it looks like to me anyway. There's always a chance that something comes up and they decide to make a big heyday out of it. Uh, but BLM looks like uh, it, it looks like she's got her money now. And she's she's going to just kind of settle down and not worry about the fight anymore. That's what it seems like. Billions of dollars raised by this organization. And they are out of money. Billions. Yet very few local local branches can say that they were actually given anything substantive. You gotta say something, right? Don't forget you can follow me online, rumble.com slash Casey the host. Hit that subscribe button while you're over there. Tons of new video content been uploaded this week. Lots, lots of videos this week, actually. And not just the radio show. So go check them out. Get rumble.com slash Casey the host. Go to the burning truth.us, get the daily show prep, podcast, videos, and more. And also sign up for my free newsletter. And don't forget, pass the mic is this Friday. More details on that coming up. We start 95.3, Michiana's new chef. WTRC. All right. Yeah. Well, I uh, forgot to save that last segment, so that's eight and nine. Okay. All right, folks, I'm going to play some music. I'll be back here in a few.
There once was a ship that put to sea. The name of the ship was the Billy O'Tee. The winds blew harder, bowed it down below me. Bully boys blow. Soon may the weathermen come to bring us sugar and tea and rum. One day when the tugging is done, we'll take our leave and go. She'd not been two weeks from shore when down on her a right whale bore. The captain called all hands and swore he'd take that whale in tow. Soon may the weathermen come to bring us sugar and tea and rum. One day when the tugging is done, we'll take our leave and go. Before the boat had hit the water, the whale's tail came up and caught her. Lance in the side harpooned and fought her when she dived down low. Soon may the weathermen come to bring us sugar and tea and rum. One day when the tugging is done, we'll take our leave and go. No line was cut, no whale was freed. The captain's mind was not on green, but he belonged to the whaleman's creed. She took that ship in tow. Soon may Well, duh, 
You don't actually call the guy you're lying about to testify. That's how you screw up the lie. So not surprised about that. Told you they weren't going to call him. It doesn't make any sense for them to call him because they already know that they're fabricating a story that the FBI has already investigated and has concluded it doesn't exist. So it is a witch hunt. We know it's a witch hunt. It's based on no actual evidence, which is why they've been caught several times manufacturing their own evidence. But yeah, didn't expect them to call Trump to testify because it wouldn't make any sense to call the guy to testify that you're lying about. Uh, counselor, I wanted to talk about All right. I'm going to go ahead and stop this stream here. I want to thank you for coming by and watching and following and subscribing and giving likes and all that fun stuff. Uh, i got to feed the cats and make dinner. So, yeah, I'll be back in a little while. Peace.